So I decided to talk about uh, three important notions in linear dynamics, weight shift, frequent hypercyclicity, and chaos. So in linear dynamics, uh, the context is the following. So sorry, uh, you have to consider uh, a pair, xt, where x uh, will be a separable infinite dimensional Fresh space. So a Fresh space, it's a generalization of Banach spaces in the sense that it's still complete, um, but the topology can be given by a sequence of norms, so not just one norm, and it also can be given by a sequence of semi-norms. Uh, so it's for x, and for t, it will be a linear and continuous operator from x to x. Okay. So when you have these two objects, uh, because t is going from x to x, you can consider the iterates of t, and so you can uh, be interested in the properties of the orbit of t, so it means uh, the set that you get when you apply t again and again to, uh, to some vector. So for this talk, uh, uh, we will assume uh, that x is a Frisch second space. So what does it mean? Uh, so it means that uh, in X, uh, we have a shoulder basis. And uh, the, the coordinate functionals are continuous. So the, the maps uh, send in, sending a sequence Xn to the element Xn for some fixed n is always continuous. So, uh, So in fact, we will consider uh, several examples of fresh second spaces. Uh, so some of them uh, that you know, uh, in fact, maybe any of them. Uh, so we will consider LP uh, uh, for P uh, bigger than one, and uh, which is a finite number. Uh, we'll talk about C0. We will also talk a little bit about omega, which is the space of all scalar sequences. So K is the real field or the, the complex field. And on this space, uh, we consider the, the following semi-norms. So Pj of Xn is uh, the maximum of Xn for n smaller than j. So in fact, with this sequence of seminomes, uh, the topology that you get on omega is uh, the topology of the convergence coordinate by coordinates. Uh, and so here you remember that pj is a seminome and not a norm. Uh, and we will also look at two other uh, spaces. So it's the, the spaces of holomorphic functions on the world complex plane here and here on the unit disk. But we will identify these species with some uh, fresh second species by considering a Taylor coefficient. Okay, so this is similar to uh, the space of sequences, such that uh, we have the following. So the series on n of xn times uh, j to the power n is finite for any j. Okay, this will be the, the seminomes that uh, we consider on this space. And uh, for uh, the, the holomorphic functions on the unit disk, uh, we can also identify this space with a, a fresh second space. Uh, but now here, uh, it's, uh, you have to consider one minus one over j to the power n. 
uh, for any j uh, bigger than two. Okay, so we will uh, consider these spaces, and uh, on these spaces, uh, we will consider an important family of operators, which are uh, the, which is the family of weighted shifts. So let me uh, introduce this family of operators. So in this talk, uh, T uh, will be uh, a weighted shift. Okay, so what this means, it means that you have to consider a sequence W, it's a sequence of non-zero curves. And then when you have fixed your, your sequence W, the, the weighted shift associated to uh, this sequence is defined uh, as follows. So, you have the sequence x0, x1, x2, and so on. The image uh, will be uh, the following sequence. So w1, x1, w2, x2, w3, x3, and so on. So you, you shift each coordinate on the left. In particular, you forget the first one. And each uh, coordinate is multiplied by uh, some weight given by your uh, weighted sequence w. And so, of course, we want that BW is an operator, so we need that BW is continuous. And in general, it's not difficult uh, to characterize when BW is continuous or not on some uh, fresh second space. Uh, so, for instance, uh, BW is continuous on LP or C0 uh, if and only if uh, W is bounded. On uh, omega, it's always continuous. So um, you can consider any sequence of non-zero scalars. On uh, the space of holomorphic functions uh, on the world complex plane, so it's continuous on H of C. If and if the, the supremum of Wn to the power 1 over n is finite, and uh, if you restrict yourself to the unit disk, then you need that on the lip sub of Wn to the power 1 over n is smaller than 1. Okay, so that is quite easy to uh, prove. And so it's the context. So we have some way to shift. We have uh, some fresh sequence spaces. And we want to better understand the dynamical properties of these operators. And in particular, we'll be interested in frequent hyperspecificity and in chaos. So let me define these uh, two notions. So we say that the operator T is chaotic. If uh, there exists x, which has a dense orbit, so uh, such that uh, the orbit of x under the action of t, which is uh, the following set. OK, so we want that uh, this orbit is dense. So there is a vector x with a dense orbit. And uh, in fact, this is the definition of hyperspecificity. And we want something more. We also want that uh, the set of periodic points is dense. Okay, so where uh, the periodic point, uh, if uh, for some n uh, bigger than one, the n of z is equal to z. Okay, so if you have these true properties, then we say that t is chaotic. What's the idea? It's in fact, if you have a vector with a dense orbit, each element in the orbit of this vector has also a dense orbit. So you have a dense set of vectors with a dense orbit. And on the other hand, you have also a dense set of periodic points. So it means that in each non-empty open set, you can find uh, vectors with uh, completely different dynamical behavior. 
Yeah, for this one, it's dance. And for this one in particular, it's finite and it's come back to, uh, to the starting point. Okay, so it's the idea of chaos. And on the other end, there is the notion of frequent hypercyclicity. So we say that this is frequently hypercyclic. So as I said, hypercyclic is just the existence of a dense orbit. And here we, we also want something more. We want that uh, there exists a vector x such that for any non-empty open set, the lower density of the set of n such that tn of x belongs to u is positive. So if x has a dense orbit, of course this set is uh, non-empty and it's even infinite. Uh, but here we are quite demanding because we want that the lower density is positive. Okay, so maybe I recall that this is the lim half of the ratio of n in this sense smaller than capital N uh, divided by capital N. Okay, so you have to visit each non-empty open set uh, quite often. And if you compare these two notions, uh, it's not clear if one of them implies the other or not. And okay, it doesn't seem so different in, because in the idea, we have a dense orbit and we have some, uh, some recurrence, some frequency with the periodic points. And here we also want a dense orbit, but we want that this dense orbit has some, uh, some frequency. Okay, so here we want that some x has the two kinds of this property in some way. So we can imagine that maybe there are some uh, links between these two notions. So what can we say about uh, these two notions if we are looking at weighted shift? In fact, for chaos, uh, it's well known. Uh, so it was obtained by uh, Carl Gosselman. in two dozens, that if x is a Frisch second space, in which uh, the basis En, so it's, you can see En, it's one in the uh, nth position and zero on the other uh, coordinates. So if this uh, basis is in fact an unconditional basis. So, so we need uh, unconditionality. In this case, uh, we can characterize uh, chaos in terms of uh, the weight W. So we have that BW is chaotic if and only if uh, we have uh, the following uh, series. In X. Okay, so at each time when I will state some, uh, some results, uh, you have to imagine that I add here before that, let BW uh, a continuous weighted shift on X, and then we have this equivalence. Okay, so it will be always, uh, always assumed that uh, BW is uh, satisfied the, the sufficient condition to be, uh, to be continuous. Okay, so for instance, uh, so it's chaotic on X. Okay. Uh, for, on LP, you need that this series to the power P is, uh, is convergent. On C0, you need that uh, W1, Wn uh, tends to infinity, and, uh, and so on. So what's the idea of this series? In fact, if you want to construct periodic points uh, for weighted shift, okay, you can do something like that. You can take some x0, x1, xn, uh, then you can put some zero if you want, and then here uh, you will repeat. So you will take x0 divided by w1, w, uh, capital N, so it's the end position. Uh, 
so on. So xn divided by w1, wn plus n. Then you put u0. And then here in 2n, you repeat again. Something like that. And so for such a sequence, if you apply BW uh, capital N times, you will get the same sequence, okay? Because here it will be multiplied by W1, WN, so you will get X0, this will disappear, and, and so on. Okay, and so if you want that this point, this sequence says R in your space, in fact, you exactly need that uh, this series uh, belongs to, belongs to. Okay, and for hypercyclicity, in fact, uh, this is also enough. Okay, so this is for chaos. So for chaos, it's quite easy to determine if a weighted shift uh, is chaotic or not. Okay, so now, what about uh, frequent hypercyclicity? So frequent hypercyclicity was introduced in 2004 by Frederick Bayer and Sophie Guivo. And uh, in the first paper, they showed that some weighted shifts on LP are frequently hypercyclic. And in fact, more generally, uh, we have the following results. Oh. Was obtained by uh, Antonio Bonilla and Carl Grosserman. in 2007, which is that, uh, okay, under the same assumption, so X is a fresh second space in which uh, EN is an unconditional basis. Then uh, we have that if BW is chaotic, uh, so in fact, if the series is convergent, uh, then um, BW is frequently hypercyclic. Okay, and the idea is that if the series is convergent, you can construct some sequences like that uh, by putting here any finite sequence that you want. And by alternating uh, correctly the finite sequences, you can uh, succeed to construct a sequence. We will be close to uh, each finite sequence quite often and so uh, frequently. So we have this implication. Uh, so of course, uh, there are several natural questions. First, uh, we can wonder if uh, the other implication is always true or not. Okay, so if BW is frequently hypercyclic, can we deduce that BW is chaotic? In general, it's not true. Okay, so it was uh, proved uh, by Frederick and Sophie. Also in 2007. That on C0, it's possible to construct a weighted shift such that uh, BW is frequently hypercyclic, but BW is not chaotic. And Okay, and what is the idea? In fact, they construct a sequence W uh, such that uh, W1, Wn, okay, and K, uh, is, equal, is equal to one along some sequence NK. So if you have this kind of weight, uh, thanks to the uh, this characterization of chaos, you know that this weight achieved is not chaotic on C0. And in fact, the difficult part of, uh, of this result is to prove that if NK uh, is sufficiently rapidly increasing and with uh, 
uh, some uh, some good properties. Uh, okay, you can succeed to uh, to construct a, a frequently high specific sequence. Okay. Okay, so we have not uh, the other implication, and if we leave for some moment uh, weighted shift, we can also wonder if. Uh, Chaos always implies frequent hypercyclicity for any operator T, mm -hmm. not only for weighted shift, or if it's not true. And here the, the, the answer is also no. Uh, so we can prove that uh, on LP or on C0, uh, the resistant operator T, uh, such that uh, T is chaotic. But T is not frequently aggressive. Okay, but of course we cannot consider weight shift, so we have to, uh, to consider another kind of operator. Okay, so if we look at these two results, we now know that there is no implication in general between chaos and frequent hypercyclicity. So you can have a Frequently hypercyclic operator which is not chaotic, and we can have a, a chaotic operator which is not frequently hypercyclic. But, uh, however, these two notions are not so different. And uh, in fact, we have the following results uh, from Bayer and Rusa, uh, 2015, which is that on LP, so always for P bigger than one, infinite. Uh, a weighted shift, so BW is chaotic, if and if BW is frequently hypercyclic. Okay, so on C0 it's false, but on LP it's true. And so we see that, okay, in some sense, these two notions are not so different. And so in a, a joint work with uh, Stéphane Charpentier and Carl Gosserman, uh, we try to better understand on which Banach sequence spaces or on which Frisch uh, sequence spaces we have this equivalence and on which spaces we have a counterexample. So weight achieved, which is frequently hypercyclic, but not chaotic. So in some sense, why on LP it works and why on C0 it doesn't work? Which uh, property of LP that C0 has not, and uh, what explains why we have these uh, this two different results. Okay, so by looking at the proof of uh, Bayan Ruta for, for LP, uh, we proved the, the following. So, okay, so EN is an unconditional basis. And we need something more. Uh, we need that uh, En is boundedly complete. So what it means? It means that for uh, every Xn in Kn, if uh, the following family is bounded, Then, in fact, uh, the world series is convergent and belongs to X. Uh, so first it's bounded in X, and then the, the series. Converges uh, in X. Okay, so of course, uh, this is true on LP, because if you have uh, some finite sum of X10 to the power of P, which is bounded, then your series is convergent. 
But it's not true on C0, because if you consider xn is equal to 1 for any n, uh, this is bounded by 1. The norm of that is bounded by 1. But of course, the, the constant sequence 1 is not in C0. Okay? Uh, and under this assumption, we can prove that uh, BW is chaotic if only if BW is frequently isosceles. Okay, so it seems that uh, the difference between uh, these, two, uh, these two behaviors, I mean, on LP and on C0, uh, could be explained by the fact that on LP, uh, the, the shoulder basis EN is boundedly, okay, boundedly complete. Uh, the first one. Uh. Okay, so what's the idea of, of the proof? Uh. So, of course, we already know that uh, if BW is chaotic, then BW is frequently hypercyclic. It was the result of Calgo uh, Selman. So, we only need to prove that uh, if BW is frequently hypercyclic, then BW is chaotic. And for chaos, we have a simple equivalence. We need to prove that the series of 1 divided by W1, Wn, En, belongs to X. So what you can do, if PW is uh, frequently hypercyclic, there exists a vector x uh, such that um, the orbit of x will visit frequently each non-empty open set. So in particular, we can choose some uh, nice uh, open set. And so if we look at the following set, so it's a set of n such that BWNX is close to E0. Okay, and close in some sense, or I, I can choose what I want. But I will consider something like that. So the norm of is zero divided by two c, or this is the constant given by uh, the unconditionality of the basis. Okay. Okay. In fact, for uh, this, uh, this family, so this family has a positive lower density. And uh, by looking at this inequality, we have some uh, condition of uh, the element uh, WK, WK plus N, XN, uh, because it has to be close to one if k is equal to zero, and close to zero if k is different to zero. And so we can prove by looking at uh, the difference of elements in this set. So if m is an n belongs to a, we are looking at m minus n. And we can succeed to prove the following. Uh, so I'm, uh, okay, I, there was a lot of things between this and this implication. So by using the, the idea uh, of Bayer and Rusa for LP, we can prove that uh, there exists a synthetic set. So it means a, a set with bounded gaps. So it's, a, it's a set of integers. Okay, so it means with bounded gaps. Uh, such that uh, the following is true. So the sum of n in capital F uh, smaller than n of 1 divided by w1 wn en. Okay, we can get a control on this element. 
And in fact, we can prove that this is bounded. Okay, so between this and this, uh, we use several results of number theory, but we don't use the fact that EN is bodily complete. Okay, so this is true for any uh, Banach sequence space. I mean, if BW is frequently hypercyclic, you can succeed to construct some synthetic set. But now, what we want? Uh, so at the end, we want to prove that uh, BW is chaotic. Okay, so uh, uh, at the end, uh, we want that. Okay, we want BW is chaotic. Thanks to the result of uh, Carl Gusserman, we know that, uh, in fact, we have to prove that the series okay, belongs to X. And so I think that you already see the idea of this assumption of bounded completeness. Because we have some boundedness of some finite sum, and at the end we went that uh, some series belongs to X. And in fact, we have just one step to do, because here we have some gap, okay? So we have to fill the gaps. And how we can fill the gaps? In fact, we can fill the gaps by using the continuity of BW. Because if you apply BW here, you will send EN on EN minus one, and we have still some boundedness, uh, where the constant has maybe increased by the norm of BW. And you can repeat, you can also apply BW to the power two and so on. And so by continuity uh, of BW, okay, we can uh, get that uh, the following is true. And then the last, uh, I mean, th this implication follows from the assumption that uh, EN is bounded complete. Okay, so in fact, this assumption is really used at the end of the proof. Okay, for, for each implication, I don't use this assumption. It's only to be able to go from ear to ear such that I, I get chaos. Okay? So for the moment, uh, I will ask you to admit this implication. I will uh, detail this one uh, after. Okay, so this is the proof that uh, if EN is bounded complete, then each frequently hypercyclic weighted shift is uh, chaotic. So we can wonder if it's exactly the characterization of Banach sequence spaces for which we have this equivalence between chaos and frequent hypercyclicity. But it's not true. Uh, so it was uh, proved by uh, Frederick uh, okay, recently that in fact it's possible to, uh, to construct uh, a Banach sequence space where uh, okay, EN is a conditional basis. But it's not boundedly complete. And we have that uh, BW is chaotic if and only if BW is frequently hypercyclic. Okay, so boundedly uh, complete, this is not a characterization of spaces for which we have this equivalence. And what is the idea of this counterexample? It's in fact that here, uh, the bounded completeness uh, requires that we have such an equivalence for any sequence xn here, okay? So if here I put xn, then I can, and it's bounded, I can always deduce that the series with xn here belongs to x. But I just need to be able to do that for some special sequence xn, which as this, uh, this form, okay? And so it's stronger uh, to require bounded completeness. In fact, we just need to, to require that it's true for such sequence. And so it's possible to construct a Banach sequence space, so it's not boundedly complete, but this is still true when the sequence Xn is equal to, to this, 
okay, where W is, uh, gives you a, a continuous weighted. Okay, so it's uh, the same idea, it's just that here we don't need exactly uh, that to be able to, uh, to have this implication. Okay, so it's for um, Banach spaces. And now I would like to, to talk about uh, the case of Frechet sequence space. Okay, so this result was only for Frechet, ba uh, for Banach sequence space, sorry. Uh, okay, so one, two, uh, this one. Uh. Okay, so what is true for British uh, sequence spaces? In fact, if you look at the definition of uh, H of C and H of D, and the norms that we uh, consider on these spaces, it's easy to remark that uh, it's boundedly complete because you only consider a weighted L1 norm uh, on these spaces. Okay, so of course it's boundedly complete. So we can imagine that on HC and HD, uh, we have equivalence between chaos and frequent hypercyclicity if it I mean, if the result on uh, Banach sequence species is also true for uh, fresh sequence species. Uh, but in fact, it will not be the case. Uh, so in the case of fresh sequence species, <laughs> what we can do? Uh, so in fact, if BW is frequently hypercyclic, We can uh, start the proof in the same way. And uh, of course, we have to, to replace the norm by some semi norms of, of, of some norms uh, in using the topology of X. But then we can prove that for any M uh, to resist a synthetic set. Such that. Uh, Pm, so it's one of norms of semi norms in using the topology of an X. Okay, so for Banach space, it's just a norm. Uh, so we have that. Uh, okay, uh, one divided by W1, Wn, Pn. Uh, okay, so I'm looking at this sequence uh, for capital N, and this is bounded. Okay, so at the beginning, we have the, the, the same implication. Then what is the problem? Of course, if EN is boundedly complete, we, we have also the, the, last, the last implication. So the problem will come from the star application, okay? When we use continuity to fill the gap in this finite sum. And what's the problem? Uh, the problem is the following. If, uh, okay, on, on the Banach space, uh, how I'm doing? Uh, so on Banach space, why star is true? Uh, star is true because if I'm looking at, uh, at that, so the norm of one divided by uh, W1, Wn, Pn, for n smaller than, uh, then something, okay, I will explain after. Uh, so we can prove, maybe I have to, to add something. Uh, I want that it's clear. Uh, okay, so if I apply BW uh, to this, okay, I get uh, that. So I will take BW of EN, BW of EN is uh, 
uh, WN EN minus one, and so I can uh, simplify the WN, and I got this. Okay, so I got the, the same sum, but now I'm looking at uh, indices in F minus one. And because F has uh, bounded gap, uh, I know that there exists K such that the union of F minus K is the whole set of integers. And uh, what this means? It means that if I'm looking at this, okay, I have the same the sum. Same I will get a sum of uh, one divided by W1, Wm, Em, with M, where well, M belongs to uh, F, if I consider K is equal to zero, F minus one, if I consider K is equal to one, F minus two, if I'm shifting two times, and so on. So maybe there will be, uh, for some M, maybe I will get that uh, several times. So maybe there is some overlap. In fact, I have something like that. It will be equal to n from zero to fn of mn, one divided by w1, wn, en, where uh, mn is a positive integer, okay, but it's not zero, uh, and fn is the maximum of f intersected with uh, zero. Okay, so by applying BW with uh, sufficiently many iterates, I can fit the gaps. And so now it's this Fn, okay, it's the same that over there. And by unconditionality, uh, this will be smaller uh, than the sum of Mn divided by uh, W1, Wn, En. So by unconditionality, so this is my concept of unconditionality. But now with this, it's exactly uh, a, a sum of weighted shift applied to something, okay? So it will be smaller than C uh, times K plus one, it's the number of terms in this sum, times the maximum of the norm of BWK, for K smaller than capital K, uh, times, uh, the, uh, the norm of, uh, of this. Okay, okay so th that is the proof of star on Banach sequence space. So if this is bounded, when I looking at capital N, okay, this will be bounded and F n uh, tends to infinity, okay, because it's the maximum of F uh, intersected with zero n. Okay, and so you see that here I use the fact that BW is continuous and I put the norm of the operator. But on free space, uh, the continuity is a little bit more difficult because uh, in general, so if BW is continuous, what I know is that uh, for any u, there exists some m and some constant, such that for any x, uh, pu of bwx is smaller than a constant for times pu of x. So if you are in the Banach space, it's just here, the norm of bwx is smaller than a constant times the number of x. The difference is that here, uh, sorry, it's not pu, but pm. It, that the continuity involves in sometimes two different norms or semi-norms, okay? And so what it means, it means that if I look at the continuity of T of BW2, I will get an inequality between PU and maybe another semi-norm PM. Maybe it's not the same M for BW, for PW to the power two, for BW to the power three and so on. And okay, so what's the problem here is that 
I would like that for any u, there exists some m, which is working for each iterates of bw that I have to consider, okay? So that here I have, a, I will get a good control of pu of that if I have a good control of pm of that, where the pair u and m works for the continuity of pw, pw to the power two, uh, pw to the power capital K, okay? And here the promise is the following, because if I want a control of that for pm, okay, uh, so I fix m, and then I get my synthetic set. But when I have my synthetic set, it's at this moment that I get the gap, k. Uh, but when I get the gap k, maybe this gap is too big to, uh, to have the inequality between pu and pm. So if you want, if I know u and k, I can find some m. But in fact, I don't know k if I don't choose m. And so I have a problem in order to, to do this proof on fresh spaces. And so just to end, uh, so we need to add something more. Uh, if we want to have equivalence between chaos and frequent hypercyclicity, uh, so it's the first one, uh, in Frisch's second space. And the difference comes from uh, the continuity of, of, of weighted shift. So we will have the, the following results. Uh, okay, so it's always with Stefan Charpentier, uh, Karl Busselman. If X is uh, okay, a fresh second space, in which EN is an unconditional basis, okay, we still need that uh, EN is bodily complete. But we need, so it's in order to have the last implication, but we need something more uh, if we want to have the star implication. And so what we need, in fact, we need that uh, the M in this inequality does not depend on the iterates that I want to consider, okay? So we say that if uh, for any weighted shift on X, I have that uh, for any U, there exists M uh, such that for any k, there is just a constant, uh, such that I have the, this inequality for any u. Okay, so if you not, are not used to fresh spaces, you say that the number of quantificators is quite big, but the, the idea is not so difficult. So b u of b w k of x is uh, bounded by uh, c prime p m of x. Okay, so here I require more than the continuity. I'm asking that to exist a M which does not depend of the iterates of PW. And if I have that, then I can do the same proof. And then uh, uh, for each weighted shift, uh, I have the equivalence. So PW is chaotic. If and only if. BW is frequently hypercyclic. Okay, so just to conclude uh, with some examples. Uh, so this assumption that for each weighted sp space, I, I have this uh, strong assumption of continuity. In fact, it's, in fact, each, it means that uh, the weighted chip is topologizable. Uh, okay, I have some spaces with this property. I have some spaces which are not this property. Uh, but we can prove that for the holomorphic function on the Unis disk, uh, 
this property is always true. And it's not difficult, just I, I gave you the characterization of continuous uh, weighted shift, so you look at the condition of w, you wipe this inequality with u and u plus one, and you prove that you, you can find a constant. Okay, it's quite easy. Okay, so for on HD, uh, we have that BW is chaotic if and only if BW is frequently anticipated. But on the other end, uh, H of C, uh, okay, if this is a double star, okay, uh, H of C does not satisfy double star. So it's not so easy to satisfy this, uh, this condition. Uh, but in our paper with uh, Stefan and Carl, we have also looked at the counterexample given on C0. So on C0, we knew that there is a, uh, a frequently hypercyclic weighted chip which is not chaotic. And we can also try to, to adapt these counterexamples to other fresh second spaces. And on this space, we are able to adapt the, uh, the counter example. And so we can prove that uh, on these spaces, uh, uh, the equivalence is false. Okay, so there exists BW uh, such that BW is frequently specific. But BW is not chaotic. Okay, so on fresh second spaces, uh, boundedly completeness is not enough because, of course, for this one, we have boundedly completeness, but we don't have the equivalence. Uh, okay, so it's quite maybe surprising that for uh, these two spaces, we have no, not the same uh, behavior of weighted shift. Okay, so thank you for your attention. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so, in the balance space setting, if you have an initial basis, being boundedly complete is the same as not containing C zero, right? Yeah. Uh, exactly. Is there any? I mean, I assume it's not true in, uh, for uh, in fresh spaces, or do you know if there is um, something similar? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's true, but uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not completely sure. Okay. Uh, and, and my other question, um, well, the LP spaces, they form a nice interpolation scale. Are you aware of any results that, general results about uh, interpolation telling that some Mm, hypercyclicity hyper properties could be preserved along an interpolation scale or in some cases, things like that? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, You've never seen anything? Uh, no. Uh, it's, okay, it's not so easy to preserve something by interpolation, I mean in, in linear dynamics. Uh, so I don't know, maybe for some, some notion it's possible, but uh, uh, it's in, in general, it's not, uh, it's not used to, to, to get something because it's not so useful. I mean, it's not so, okay, so easy to. Okay. Use. Thank you. Other questions? Other comments? Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I would have lots of questions, of course, but I'm afraid we. We don't have so much time. So just one question. Okay. Uh, in fact, I was wondering if you, it's not really related to this talk in particular, but uh, uh, did you try to, I mean, seriously, uh, to uh, construct examples of operators which are chaotic but not frequently hypercyclic on fresh spaces? Uh, okay, so you, so you mean that? 
of pressure specific resistance, but yes, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't try. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure that it's possible. Uh, I, I don't see why it would be possible on LP and all, or, uh, not on a, on a pressure space which is not normal, but uh, I didn't try. Uh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so if there are no more questions or comments, I think we can thank Quentin again. Thank you.